What's really exciting is this. Once you make the investment to engage GPU acceleration, once you make the investment to get onto the, the train of GPU computing and benefit from what others have benefited from over the years, once you get onto that train, then all of your investment just gets faster and faster and faster. So the question is, how much faster? How much faster? How much more advancement will we make in one year? We've been studying deep learning now for some time. We've had the benefit of, because of the researchers in, your, in this room, people like Jeff Dean over at Google, Andrew Eng at Baidu, formerly at Stanford, Andre, Alex, all of the researchers that we've worked with over the years, we've learned the challenges of deep learning and we've applied them to our next generation architecture. Every year, we show you one click out. This year, let me tell you about Pascal. Pascal, of course, a mathemat French mathematician, has three very important enabling technologies. Three very important enabling technologies. First of all, it's based on a next generation G GPU architecture. So in itself, it will benefit from a billion dollars worth, worth of refinement because of R&D over the last three years. Just inherently, if it, has no, if it has no more features, it has the benefit of all of the refinements and process advancements and circuit advancements and design advancements. It's just going to be faster. It's just going to be faster. But it has also, on top of that, three very important advancements. One of them is called mixed precision. This is the first GPU in our company's history with mixed precision. First high performance GPU, first desktop GPU, first large GPU. Second, 3D memory. 3D memory, getting more bandwidth is easy. Getting more capacity is easy. Getting more capacity and more bandwidth is really hard. Well, with Pascal, we're going to take a big leap forward. And then number three, this great technology we talked to you about last year called NVLink. The ability to connect multiple GPUs at literally, f well, let me just not let that out of the bag, very high speeds. Connecting, connecting GPUs uh, with each other. Because it's so important now for us to scale the number of GPUs. I just showed you that DevBox has four. People were asking us for 64. The difference between four and 64 is a very big difference. And so a lot of that has to do with inter interconnect speed. First, just architecturally, without those three features, without those three features, Pascal is twice the floating point performance per unit energy. Big deal already, fantastic. Second, it has 2.7 times the memory capacity, so it's 32 gigabytes instead of 12. Third, it has four times the mixed precision performance. A lot of the computation that is done in the convolution neural nets could be done in lower precisions. FP16 would be pretty fantastic. And so a lot of people are, are uh, quite excited about this. All of a sudden, you get a turbocharge in computational throughput of the convolution layers. However, as you saw in the earlier, the first five layers of the, com of the, of the deep neural net is computationally intensive. Whole bunch of convolutions all happening simultaneously as you propagate down the network, up the network. But when you reach the last three layers, the fully connected layers, it is just completely, utterly bandwidth limited. And so having four times the, the computational throughput is all, all good. However, unless you dramatically improve, improve memory bandwidth, um, all of that could be lost as a result of Amdahl's law. The last few layers could now swarm the com compu computational time of the whole, whole uh, network. And so Pascal has three times the memory bandwidth. 2.7 times more capacity, three times the memory bandwidth. Now, the question is, what does it all mean? How do I compile it all together? Okay? And so here I'm about to do what is, what is known at NVIDIA as CEO math. It is supreme math. This is a form of math that <laughs> it's way beyond deep learning math way beyond deep learning math. It's called CEO math. 
And so now I'm going to illustrate it to you. CEO math. Well, Pascal is going to be 10 times faster than Maxwell. Here's how I got there. Notice all the numbers on this slide. There are no decimal points. Done on purpose. Please note, for anybody who's going to uh, be upset, if it doesn't turn out to be 10.00, please look at the bottom right-hand corner. These are very rough estimates. Okay, this is, this is utterly for illustration purposes. Now, of course, there are 10,000 engineers at NVIDIA and they're working really, really hard at every single level of this, from, from, from process to circuits to architecture to design to all the middleware and the software and the system, the interconnects, all of that to make this possible. I condensed it all into one slide. All right, so I'm being unfair to so many people that I can't even, but I, I'm hoping that it could, it could explain why I'm so excited about Pascal. First of all, the forward path. The forward path is the first path or the inference path. This is forward, you do the convolution layers, and then you do the fully connected layers, and then it generates a result. You, if it's a training run, then you compare that result with the right answer, and you compute the delta, but the error term, and you back propagate it, and you do stochastic gradient descent, and then you try it again. Okay? So the forward path, and we're talking about learning right now, the forward path benefits 4x from the convolution layers, right? 4x, 2x from just the architecture itself, and then 2x from the mixed precision in FP16, so that's 4x. And then when it hits the fully connected layers, it's three times the bandwidth, but we also have high, we also have FP16 now, which doubles the bandwidth. So it gives you 6x. And then now when you're working backwards, you get the back propagation now, uh, and it's 6x because of the bandwidth, and then 4x because of the convolution layer. Well, you know, it's kind of hard to exactly to say exactly where, um, how many convolution layers and, and as, a, as opposed to how many fully connected layers and so on and so forth. And so I just kind of roughly said 5x. It's 5x faster as a result of several things. Mixed precision, mixed precision, well, the Pascal architecture itself makes precision and the benefits of 3D memory that is not just wide, but also very, very large, so that we could keep a large network in one compute node. But it's more than that. One of the things that most people are just so, they're just out of their minds excited about is MVLink. I'm out of my mind excited about it. The reason for that is this. We just simply get, get enough performance out of the single largest GPU on the planet. Now, just to, the, just, to, just to give you a frame of reference, the box that I just showed is DevKit. Uh, the Digits DevKit has four GPUs, each one's with seven teraflops, 28 teraflops in 1,300 watts. 28, 28 teraflops in 1,000 watts, 1,300. If you compare that to a supercomputer in the year 2000, it takes 1 million watts to deliver 1 teraflops. It's 28 times faster than the supercomputer, the fastest supercomputer in the year 2000, and it's one-tenth the power. Is one-tenth? No, 1,000 times less power. 28 times more computation, 1,000 less times power. Okay? So incredible advancements. Supercomputer next to your box. Well, what we like to do, of course, we could use way more computational capability than that. And NVLink allows you to now scale more GPUs. And the reason for that is because if you're going to split the work across multiple GPUs every so often, you're going to have to update the weights across multiple GPUs. And that is interconnect limited. We now have NVLink, which is five times the performance of PCI Express. And if the performance of the computation is five times. It says that we can take digits, which has four GPUs today, and convert it and upgrade it to four Pascals. However, because we also have mixed mode, mixed precision, we can double the interconnect bandwidth. And as a result, instead of four GPUs, the next digits dev box will likely have eight GPUs. Eight GPUs, eight GPUs. And so what that allows people to do, literally, is to train 10 times faster. 
The training problem is one of the, one of the most challenging computational problems today. It is one of the most important computational problems today. And now we could do it 10 times faster.